What? Dynatrace can do that with open telemetry? No way. Hey Andy, what are we learning about today? Well, today we're learning about how Dynatrace can be a better home for your open telemetry data because uh, we give you one or two or maybe a little bit more things to make your life easier as you're analyzing the data that you're interested in the Dynatrace. Awesome. I can't wait. Um, and I have been running my Otel demo app and sending data to Dynatrace for the last hour and a half now. So I think we have plenty of data to play with. So yeah. let me share my screen and let's get started. Cool. Okay. Here we go. All right, I'm in Dynatrace and yeah. I've got my Otel data being sent over here. So where are we gonna start? Well, if you are, I think you mentioned the Open Telemetry Demo app. That means it's an app with multiple services. What I always like to do to get started with is actually getting a service-based view because you have okay. different services. You want to see how services are doing. The easiest way to find services is using the magic key combination, the shortcut Control K or Command K. I think that's on your screen. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So search for services. Ta -da. Ta -da. So I think we can just open up the uh, the services app. Yeah, the top right. one. That I'm going to pin it as well. Yeah, um, makes sense. So that I have access to it on the sidebar. Mm -hmm. I learned this recently, and it's very exciting. <laughs> you know, okay. it's the small, the small things in life that make that make life easier. Um, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So what you see here is just a mm -hmm. quick overview. 18 services. You mentioned it's just the Open Telemetry demo app. You would then. Yeah. We, we specifically also highlight some of the uh, serverless functions, but let's click on the 18 services because that really gets you into the overview. And I just want to ask, I'm guessing um, under these categories, since I don't see like any numbers associated with these, it means that I don't have um, anything under Google Cloud or Azure or AWS Lambda, I'm assuming. Exactly. exactly. Right. And if you click on those or also on the top, it basically brings yeah. you to the same screen, but with okay. a different uh, default filter. So if you click oh, on okay. services, Right, it just uh, brings up all the services without any filter, and uh, this is kind of the first thing that I that I like. Right, you get uh, a very common uh, look and feel uh, in the different Dynatrace apps that we have. It's typically a filter bar on top where you can type on the left side some type of filtering that is typically metadata based, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have a list or a table uh, that is kind of like your main interaction point. Cool. This is awesome. And it shows all of my services from the hotel demo. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I think it's kind of cool that on the side, it shows like um, what language it's written in. Mm -hmm. um, so here we see that this is Python, ASP, PHP, Go, which I don't know, it's a nice touch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I always yeah, I like these it. sorts of things where it's like, oh, thank God we take the mystery out of what language this is written in. Yeah, I mean, especially if you are responsible for a large environment and with a very diverse environment, these small things sometimes help to give you a better understanding in, in what technology stack are you operating in or what are you looking at, right? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Okay, so... Hey, quick quick things here. Uh, as you yeah. can see um, on the table, so we show you obviously the list of services, you see failure rate, response time. I, I believe, I'm not sure what screen size you typically have, but you can scroll to the right this table so you can see some additional uh, default uh, columns that are here. So different okay. response times, great for a performance engineer to see the different uh, percentiles throughput. And there's also health alerts and custom alerts. And I think this is very important because one of the things we do from a Dynatrace perspective, we automatically baseline your data. We will automatically then uh, indicate that a service is, for instance, unhealthy if we see you know, high response time, um, like more than normal, uh, so abnormal response time or abnormal throughput or abnormal uh, failure rates, then we automatically mark the service as unhealthy. Um, it would show up visually here, so it makes it easier for you to drill and find unhealthy services. You can also get alerted on it. So just to give you some ideas of why, why this, what health status means or health alerts. Oh, cool. So then that means that over time, it'll kind of learn what's normal for the system. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, these are, as I said, common metrics that you see. If yeah. you scroll left again on the table, I'm not sure if yeah. you have any, if you have any preferred. I don't know the the demo app as well as as you do. Is there any typical service that you want to analyze? Um, hmm, let's see. We can look at the. Um, how about we look at the cart service for funsies? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. Yeah. So if you click on it, actually one more little tip and trick. Um, mm -hmm. As you get used to Dynatrace and as you're getting familiar with all the logos and the icons, uh, I typically it eventually collapse the very left menu bar, especially when you do screen oh, sharing yeah. and on smaller screens, right? You can collapse the left menu bar on the bottom. There's a collapse button. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, yeah. I was actually wondering about that. Yeah, um, yeah that's nice. Yeah, I do, I do appreciate that kind of feature as well. So Yeah. Um, yeah, so what, what you see here now, right? So you clicked on the service, we give you service-based overview. Again, the key indicators, failure rate, response time, uh, over time now, right? Yeah. You're, you're look, currently looking at the last uh, two hours. I think you said you started that service about an hour or so ago. Right? Yeah, something to that effect. So we've got yeah. some, some nice beefy data. Yeah, exactly. And if you want to look at a, at a longer time frame. Uh, you can always change the time frame if you see just on top of the list. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here. That's where it is, right? Um, in, in your case, it will just, I mean, because you just started it, you don't even have two hours worth of data. Yeah, it just yeah. defaults to whatever data is there, but you can go in any time frame. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I think if we go to one hour just for funsies, um, yeah. do I have to refresh anything or did it refresh it for me? No, it, I think you need to, I think it, it refreshed uh, the last hour actually in the table and then. Oh, um, shoot. It, so, I, yeah. I got to, I noticed yeah. that there's a different thing here. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Hurrah. Cool. And then, yeah, I think actually as you scroll down, there's some interesting mm -hmm. stuff, right? Response time throughput. You also see the endpoints here. So yeah. uh, we automatically give you insights on each individual endpoint of your service. Oh, that's right? cool. That's, right? You can also expand it. Yeah, you see the individual. <laughs> you can tell I'm curious. I'm just like, what does this do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the, awesome. point, right, the point that we want to make here is we, we have an understanding of what service owners need and yeah. they need an automated overview, automated baselining, automated anomaly detection on the four golden signals, but not only for the service, but for every single endpoint. This is why we do this automatically. Um, also, what you see if you scroll further down, actually at the very bottom, oh, yeah. right? You already see the incoming and outgoing oh, yeah. services. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool because I think um, like if it was me trying to understand a system or troubleshoot or whatever, it's like, what called this? Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yep. And where's this going next? Right. So yep. I think, honestly, I think that's um, pretty freaking cool. Yeah. And then also embedded, right? The metrics. Yeah. And the reason why this is really interesting, right? Because you have a service. In this case, you're looking uh, at your, um, what was the service called again? The the payment, not the payment service, the, the uh, card service. Yes. Right? I wanna, yes. Yeah. Card service. Yeah. And so the card service has dependencies, upstream and downstream dependencies. Yeah. And in, in that service, you all not only see who is calling in and who are you calling, but you also yeah. immediately get a health indicator. Remember the health alerts that I mentioned uh, earlier? Yeah, yeah. They also show up here, right? Oh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. I see that here. That's, yeah, that's super handy. Um, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. And then um, I noticed that there's some other kind of interesting things. Um, there's there's a couple of interesting things that I that caught my eye. Mm -hmm. um infrastructure and logs mm -hmm. um i would like to explore those yeah i mean don't don't shy away from clicking on all right it. i'm gonna click on infrastructure um yeah. what what would i expect to see here by the way so if we would additionally pull in we, if we enable our kubernetes support where we can pull in additional infrastructure metrics uh from kubernetes itself if you have um uh, these services running on any type of host where our agent collects infrastructure data, yeah, then it would show up here. Meaning exactly. you would see where it runs on, which hosts, CPU, disk, you get all of these details. I think in your case, you're probably only pushing traces in right now and you have not, uh, in, you know, in our, in this case, 
maybe turned on the Kubernetes integration where we can pull in additional information about infrastructure. But this is what you would what you would see here. Oh, okay, yeah. The the reason why I don't think we're seeing anything here is because I'm running the demo app using Docker Compose. Ah, um, okay. So there there's no Kubernetes in play here. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Mystery solved. Um, okay, mystery I'm gonna click on logs now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um here I am seeing that this is basically a chart of of like is this just volume of logs, log records? Yeah, it's the info log. So these are basically all the logs that came in and are associated to that particular card mm -hmm. service. Cool. Right? Can I and filter on on other types of logs? Yeah, right now it seems you only have info, right? So if oh, you okay. would have so any... more if there was more types different types of logs that would show yeah, up yeah. here. Exactly. Okay. And the cool thing is, and uh, I know this is not the best example, but if you would have error logs here, for instance, or warnings, yeah. then you see where it says recommended queries. Yeah, yeah. The recommended queries will automatically, based on the context and based on what the data we see, give you a recommendation. For instance, show me only the error logs. Or yeah, yeah. in case there's a health issue, so Dynatrace has detected there's an, the service has been unhealthy, let's say at 10 o'clock, yeah. then one of the recommended queries would be show me the logs prior, during, and shortly after. So it basically automatically filters the log query to exactly that time frame that is relevant. Oh, that's super cool. So mm -hmm. basically I would see like a, a line per type of per recommended query. Yeah, because not everybody queries. That's cool. Okay, I'm gonna run this one. It has yeah. recommended one query for us. So <laughs> yeah. I am curious. Yeah. Cool. And this is just filtered to this particular service. I yeah. take it. Exactly. So you can see the top, this is our query language, TQL. Mm -hmm. so it basically says, give me all the or show me all the logs, mm -hmm. but only where the logs are associated exactly with uh, the service we're looking at, right? Oh, okay. It automatically filters on it, yeah. That's awesome, ooh, fun. Ooh, okay, <laughs> I wanna see what this is, open record with, dun, dun, dun. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm a big, and of distributed tracing. So I'd be curious to see what happens if we open this log record with distributed tracing. Let's see. So open record with means, I mean, you clicked on the log entry, right? Ooh, and la, la. You see the distributed traces that are coming in from this particular service. I think there were two options when you opened up the um, open with, there was a yeah. big list of options you had. Yeah. So there were two for distributed traces. One, just show me all the distributed traces for that service. So this yeah. is now where you see all the distributed traces. This is now the distributed tracing app. Yeah, yeah. Service. Another option would have been show me only the traces where this particular log. Um, oh, I think that would have been more useful, actually. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Can we go back? Let's go back. Um, yeah. Should I go back to the services app for that? No, yeah, you can do that, yeah. Uh, where are we? Here we go. Boom. And okay. you can also see, right, it, okay. it keeps the context as good as possible. It keeps the context yeah. on the card service. Yeah, this is where you were I really remember me. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we're going to do this again. Yeah. And I'm going to... Maybe do me one more favor. Before you do the yeah. open record with, uh, yeah. just expand, just expand one of those logs. Maybe the one oh, that you want yeah. to click on the left. Of just course. to see, right, um, this is where we also see that the content, the log message obviously is interesting, but yeah. as logs are getting sent to Dynatrace, as the open telemetry collect is enriching it and then get sent to Dynatrace, we're also enriching it with yeah. additional information. So these are basically all the, um, uh, it's all the metadata on every log. Oh, right? cool. So anything that's got DT dot, I'm assuming is Dynatrace enriched data then. Exactly. And for instance, the cool. DT entity service, you may have wondered, the query on top looks interesting. Why did it filter on a DT entity service? Because yeah. when we see traces or logs or metrics coming in, yeah. we internally have an entity model. Um, so we understand what a service is, what a, what a workload is, uh, what a host is. And so we are we are enriching every data point that is sent to Dynatrace, logs, metrics, traces, events with our data model. Right? Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Mm, so like behind the scenes magic. <laughs> Behind the scenes magic, exactly, yeah. I love it. Okay, cool. 
Um, all right, I'm going to unexpand this and let's do let's do the open record with. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you said that there was um, okay, there's view trace and time range for a timestamp, and then view traces for service any time range or for a time. Aren't they the same? Uh, I think the one that you want is actually the top one, the few the trace, because the other one is few traces. Maybe oh, maybe. oh, 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 that's very subtle. Okay, view traces versus yeah, it's a good, trace. it's good. Feedback. It's very subtle. You're right. It's not okay. Uh, yeah, I, if you hadn't pointed it out, like I would have been like, but they look the same. Okay, so let's yeah. let's do this one. Let's see how. It, let's see if it looks different. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so okay. Different. Color me impressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so now it's basically you can see on the top, it is filtering on that trace ID. So on the okay, very top, you yeah, see the filter. So that means. Yeah. On that log that you clicked, we had the metadata yeah. of the trace. So now we say, show me all of the span records. Right? Yeah. This is why you see five span records. Yeah. And it automatically selected the right one. And on the bottom, you see the nice um, distributed traces tree. Uh, yeah. It's by default not expanded to its full extent. And I think last time I showed you, if you still remember how you can expand the whole tree. I remember the big plus sign here yeah, in the corner. Exactly, yeah. I was like, yeah. <gasps> <laughs> yeah no that's super cool um mm -hmm. it's it's the little things it's the little things to make things convenient well especially because i'm thinking like um if, if it, it's it's one thing to like have an example where it's like oh your trace is like you know five spans deep or whatever but then you get like these really gnarly ones where your traces are i don't know how many spans deep um mm -hmm. you definitely don't want to be expanding all those manually yeah so yeah, but I think this is, uh, I know we wanted to keep these educational sessions also uh, short and precise, but what I like about this is that if you are observing an application like your open telemetry demo app with multiple services, I like to start in the services view. You understand, do you have any uh, problems from a failure rate, from a performance perspective, you get all the details, you get all the dependence information, you get the logs and you can go down to the individual traces, right? I mean, very yeah. easily. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Cool. I think, and I think this is a good uh, spot to to end this demo. Um, yeah. I think it's been very educational. Um, and for folks following along, um, the services app is a really great starting point when you are looking um, to start playing with your data in Dynatrace. <laughs>